Okay. Do you have a question? Um, yeah, are we waiting until people get on? No, we can start right now. We're already like two minutes in, so. Okay, so we were working on it were practice tests, right? Um, I guess our first question was, do you want to ask number eight on multiple choice? Yeah. Okay, number eight on the multiple choice of the acid, bases, heating, practice test. Okay. Um, hydride. And so we looked that up, and it was like a compound derived by moving we're moving water. Right. Well, we thought it was um, I don't know if it'll help you at all, but it's that's not going to be on the test. Okay. Acid anhydrides fall under um, they fall under the uh, organic chemistry. So uh, the organic chem chemistry functional groups, and since that's been removed, you don't have to, to worry about it. So let's see. Hold on a second. CJ, we're going to have to mute you, buddy. I figured. OK. Give me a second. I think I'm muting myself. There we go. All right. OK. Um, so the, the, uh, acid anhydride. Okay. So you can see it on here. Um, the answer is C, one and two only because of there's a, a single bond and a double bond, usually the way that works. And if you remove a water, you remove a water and you can get that, um, to get the SO2 or get the SO3. The thing is you cannot remove a water from, um, another substance and get SO4. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, do we just keep asking questions? I don't want to like take everyone. No, 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 absolutely. If they have questions, I can say something or they can type them in. I'm looking at the group chat too, so. Okay, so number 11. Same test? Our multiple choice on the test. Okay. The safest and most effective emergency procedure to treat an acid splash in skin or on skin is to do which of the following immediately? Okay, so you um, you want to reduce the acid, right? Yeah. And then you want, and then you want to counteract it with a base. But the problem is you cannot do a strong base, which is why C is not the correct one. Does that make sense? Because a strong base is just as damaging as a strong acid. Okay. It's not like you're. It's because it's because it's on you. You're gonna if you if you put more on you, you're not necessarily guaranteed to get it in exactly all the same spots as the acid to exactly neutralize it, right? Yes. So you need to you need to get as much of the acid as possible get it off of you, which is the whole flush the affected area with water, which that was answers for C, D, and E, so you knew it had to be probably C, D, or E. And then you don't want to necessarily add more acid. It's already acidic, and you don't want to add a strong base because that one's not going to be any good either, but a, a buffer, sodium bicarbonate, is what you need to add because that way it's going to keep sort of a, it's not going to be as strong of a, um, of a solution, and because it's a bicarbonate, it's going to pick some of that up. So it's going to make it a little bit more. Um, it's good because it's basic. It's going to counteract some of the acid that's on there to keep it somewhat of a, a neutral neutral pH. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let me let me start going through some of the ones in the group chat now. Okay. So lecture thirty one number ten. Uh, ooh, okay, that is going to take me a second because I don't have that one up. Let's see if I have it somewhere. Yeah, that's point formal. I said I messed it up. 
All right, let's try a new one. Lecture 31, number 10. Okay, lecture 31, number 10. This one, equal volumes of 0.2 molar sodium carbonate and 0.4 molar hydrochloric acid are combined. This is the one you want to know about, CJ? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, this one, you've got um, the sodium carbonate. So, you know you've got CO3 2 minus, and the sodium is going to be always soluble. So, it's a, um, it's a spectator ion. So, it's not even going to be there. It's going to combine with the H plus in hydrochloric acid, which is going to give you the sodium bicarbonate. Well, this is, and this is the thing about, these were the old rules for what we called, um, or the net ionic equations. Um, this was called the Coke rule. Sodium bicarbonate, which, it, or not sodium, I'm sorry. Um, carbonic acid is what's in, is what gives soda its fizzy properties. And it produces this carbon dioxide. So, 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 um, Carbonic acid combined in the water, you get you end up getting some liquid water being released from that and some carbon dioxide. Um, the other equation you could have said, I guess, if you were gonna, if you, you could just skip the H two CO three and just go to the bottom one right there, you can see that it goes straight to the H two O CO two. Um, this is something that would be considered because these are the net ionic equations. These are things that you don't have to have memorized. These are, these are memorization pieces. So this will not be on the test. Okay. 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 All right. So seven and eight on multiple choice. Let's see. All right. So if I go back to the, go back, hmm. Oh, I must have minimized it. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay. Seven and eight on the multiple choice. Okay. If the acid dissociation constant Ka for an acid a, oops, HA is eight times 10 to the negative fourth at 25 degrees Celsius, what percent of the acid is associated in a 0.5 molar solution of HA at the same temperature? So we said 4%. And you're wondering how we would do this without a calculator, right? Okay. So let's go to our bamboo paper. All right. Okay. So... Uh, we have the Ka is equal to 8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Oops. All right. Um, and we have what percent of the acid associated with 0.5 molar solution of HA? Okay, so what they have is, and because remember that Ka is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of A minus mm -hmm. over the concentration of HA, right? Yeah, that makes and now we have 8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Wow, that's looking really sideways. Is equal to basically x times x over the concentration of HA, which we just said was 0 0.5. So 8 times 10 to the negative, or what I should say is, so that's equal to x squared over 0 0.5. So if we take this, let me delete that, or erase that actually. So 0 0.5 times 8 times 10 to the negative fourth is equal to 4 times 10 to the negative fourth, right? 4%. I got it. You got it? Yeah, sorry. No, that's okay. X squared, we take the square root of both. Oops, I did it again. I hate it when this happens. Give me one moment, please. Okay. 
So the square root of this and the square root of that. So x is equal to basically what's the square root of four? Two, two times ten to the negative two. Is that about right? Yeah. Uh, all right. And then we get, so that means that it's 0 0.02, which is equal to 2%. And uh, since it was in a 0.5 molar solution, I don't know if is associated. Are they in origin? I don't know. I know. So we, oh, we did 2% of this and 2% of the A minus. So, oh wait, I'm not doing this right, am I? No, yeah, you, no, you point oh two and then you divide it by point five, and you multiply that by hundred to get the percent. Of right. The oh, you're. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Sorry. Okay. Let me erase that mm -hmm. part. So that was the concentration. Right. 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 Okay. Two point five molar, and then we take that. We say, right, divided by the zero point five molar equals the. Um, 0 0.04 uh, times 100 equals, I ran out of room, sorry, 4%. Okay, so that was number 7, and Lexi, you said you got that one, so that was good. So the rest, everyone else, though, had an opportunity to see that. And then 10. We could do 8, too. 8, 2, all right. It, oh, we just talked about that at the beginning. Acid anhydride is not on the test because anhydrides are a functional group of organic acids, or I mean organic molecules, but you should know that anhydrides are formed um, by the removal of water and that, um, that these, can, these are, as far as which one of the three, oh, you can't see it, let me go back to it. Okay, so uh, on number eight, um, each of these have to be formed by the removal of water, by the removal of two H's and an O. You cannot, there is, there is no such thing as SO5. You cannot remove an oxygen and get SO4, but you can remove an oxygen and get SO3. You can remove an oxygen and get SO2. So that's why these two form, but not three. Uh, okay. All right. In... 10. All right. Um, so we have that titration and we have a strong acid and a strong base. And number 10 says, if, an, if unknown to the technician, some water had been added to the unknown sulfuric acid solution by mistake after the precise volume had been measured, which value in the table of observations, if any, would be changed? If there were a change, in which direction would the, would the change occur? E, no change reported in any of the three values. Okay. So this is actually, um, once you've established, so this is after the precise volume has been measured. So you, you know exactly how much sulfuric you have in there. When you're doing the lab, sometimes procedures will have you rinse off the tip of the acid, or I'm sorry, rinse off the tip of your burette, which is dropping your base to get all the base out. If you add water, it does not matter because it's all about the moles of acid and moles of base. If you add water, are you changing the moles of acid or are you changing the moles of base? And the answer is no. Are you guys still there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're so you're not so when you um so because if you've already established how much acid you have, then it doesn't matter if you add some water in there because you're not changing the moles of acid and you're still going to have the same number of moles of base that you're adding in. So again, adding water does not affect your titration calculations. Does that make sense, Lexi? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now it looks like we're going to go to the free response sections, free response one and two. Okay. All right, so so we'll go and we'll do it. We'll do them in order. So free response two, and then we'll come back and do free response one. So we have 
an acid. We have three different acids with three different Ka's. And um, in this case, we have the H, basically it's the second H coming off of the carbonic acid. We have the second H coming off of the phosphoric acid and the second H coming off the sulfuric acid. Um, so from the systems above, identify the conjugate pair that is best for preparing a buffer with a pH of 7.2. Explain your choice. And um, so when you're looking at these, uh, when you have an equivalent, when you have an equivalent um, amount of the acid and its conjugate, so when you, when you have the, when you have the equivalent, I'm sorry, when you have the equivalent of your acid and its conjugate base, as far as a buffer goes, then your Ka is equal to your, your pKa is equal to your pH. And so, um, so when you have that situation, you look at these ones right here, you can see that, um, so the, the, the four point, that means that if you took pKa, since you have your calculator, just pull out our calculator. So if we plugged in each of these, and since we're doing P, it's negative log of that number, right? So negative log of... So if you did the, the, the pKa of the first of the carbonic acid, the second one, then you get 6.3. If you take the negative log of the second one, you get 7.21, which is pretty much where you want to be. And then if you take the negative log of the third one, and we're going to do it anyhow just to, because, you know, we're thorough. Of 1.3, 2, you end up with like 1.9, 1.89. So um, when you plug it in, then that's the closest one. Because you're, when you're talking about, when it says when you want to make a buffer, and in a buffer you have, you don't have to have a cool mass, but you're pretty pretty close to that when you have the exact, it's like the, the middle of your buffer. Actually, let me switch to this real quick. Let me switch to the, to the um, bamboo paper for a second. Okay. When you're making um, a buffer, and you get a titration curve for the buffer. And let's say you start with the acid. So, so this is pH and this is your volume. Right. So what ends up happening is, is let's say you get something like this. Okay. And this right here is your equivalence point. But this point right here, this usually corresponds to the middle of your buffer region. And this is this is kind of where you get see where the volume uh, and I tried to I tried to be accurate. I don't know if I'm that accurate, but this is like the middle. This is where your your um, your concentration of let's say your acid is equal to the concentration of the conjugate base, right? Because this is a this is a weak acid and this is its conjugate base. When they're equal, right, then the pH is equal to the pKa. And so um, depending upon you know what what you have as your buffer, then um, that could be higher or lower, but that's usually what that corresponds to. So that's kind of what you're you're looking for. That's you want it to be in the middle of your buffer region. Um, so that was why two, that's why two A is what it is. Um, all right, let's keep going on to B. Dissolve equal moles or amount. Let's see. I'm sorry. Explain briefly how you would prepare the buffer solution described in A with the conjugate pair you have chosen. And, um, well, that makes sense. You, you would dissolve equal. Like I just said, you want it to be equal amounts of each of them because you want your pH to be equal to your pKa. 
uh, I suppose I should go back to the practice test so that you guys can see what I'm looking at. All right, here we go. So um, 2B says, explain briefly how you prepare the buffer solution. And after I just finished explaining, you want equal amounts of acid in its conjugate base. And in this situation, H2PO4 minus is the weak acid. HPO4 two minus is the conjugate base, which is why you want equal amounts of it. Uh, 2C, if the concentrations of both the acid and the conjugate base you've chosen were doubled, how would the pH be affected? Explain the capacity of the buffer's effect. Okay, the pH would not change. Um, which makes sense. If you have the same amounts of both, regardless of how much they are, it's the same thing. That, that right? The log, um, the log of one is still zero. So um, the capacity of the buffer means like how much it could take, and that that difference is that when you're talking about capacity, is like the total capability of your buffer to um, absorb. Uh, the strong acid or the strong base and still maintain um, uh, the not large changes in pH. So the capacity would be much larger because there would be so much more of the buffer, which makes sense. Uh, 2D, explain briefly how you could prepare the buffer solution in A. If you had available the solid salt of the only one member of the conjugate pair and solution of a strong acid and a strong base. Okay, so I don't know if you guys remember this, but we did this sort of, um, or actually I guess I did it for you, but what you would take is you would take the, um, it's always the weak one plus the strong of the opposite. So if you wanted the, um, so if you have the conjugate, let's see, the buffer solution, you have the veil of solid salt of the only one member of the conjugate pair. Okay, so if you had the conjugate acid, which in this case would be the, the H2PO4 minus, you would combine it with a strong base because it would pull off these H's and create more of the HPO4 two minus. And that's what you want more of. Uh, that, you know, because you, you want to have a bunch of this H, you want to increase in a normal... In a normal situation, if you just dissolved H2PO4- minus in water, this Ka is so small that you would get very little of the HPO4-2-. minus. But whenever there's a strong of the opposite, so this is a weak, weak acid, if you get a strong base in there, it's going to strip a bunch of the H's off, creating a lot more of the HPO4-2-. minus. Then this H2PO4 will reestablish an equilibrium, but now there'll be a ton of this HPO4 two minus just kind of floating around. And if it's a strong base like NaOH, you'll get some NaHPO4, right? Um, which would absolutely be fine. Kind of fits what we talked about. If you remember the acetic acid and sodium acetate, that's a really popular buffer, and that's a really popular question in um, AP exams. So but there are a bunch of other ores, like adding a strong acid to the salt of the conjugate base. So if you had the HPO4 two minus, you could add the strong acid. Now, if you guys remember, um, or you guys may not remember, but um, what happens is that these questions are created uh, for the AP exam, and they try to think of how they can answer, or how they want to word the questions, and they think of what are possible answers. And then when they get the questions in, when they, when they get, I'm sorry, when they get the tests in from all over the world, they sit down and they, they read through tests and then as new answers come up but that are still right, they add them to the list. So as you can see here, there are a whole bunch of answers or the way that it, that it looked. So what happened probably was that maybe they had one or they might have had two, but more than likely some students came up with some other ones and the, and the, and the readers said, oh hey, that works as well, let's add it to the list. So where this, so this, they said, oh, you add one mole of the conjugate acid to a half a mole of the conjugate base, or the, I'm sorry, the strong base. Great, that was also acceptable. Same thing. Use a pH meter to monitor the addition of a strong base to a conjugate acid or a strong acid to a conjugate base. So you can see there were a whole bunch of different ways to do it. You just had to pick one of them and you would have been correct. So uh, that was Sneha. Sneha, does that answer all your questions on for your response number two. Is Sneha with us? I think so. 
Yes, she is with us, but I don't think she has her camera on. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, good. All right, got it. All right, so now we're on to free response number one for Caitlin. Oh, and this is one another one that had like a lot of different responses. Okay, so you have a base. This is a methylamine. Now, this is really key. I want you guys to notice that this is a weak base and it's organic. You see the CH3 that leads before that? If it is... If it is a organic weak base, it can only be this, okay? You're not gonna have a CH3 ending in an OH and be a, um, and be a, a, a weak base. If it's, a, if it's a, a, an organic substance having the CH3, CH2, or CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH2, whatever, and it ends in OH, that means it's an alcohol, and that means it is not. You know, I'm just going to write this on the on the bamboo. This is important. This is important for our test, and you never know when they're going to put it on um, the AP exam. So let's let's put this up here. Okay. So organic base. Organic or organic bases. So CH3, CH2, CH2, NH2. Or it could say like C6, H, I don't know, 14. I, I'm probably doing this wrong. NH2. This is what makes it a base. This is what makes it a base. The NH2 at the end. And it'll always end in something amine. Okay. If you get something like CH3, CH2, CH2, OH, this is an alcohol. Alcohol, if I can spell it, alcohol, okay? And so this is definitely not a base. So this is not going to dissociate in water. It's not going to produce OHs. You're not going to get a pH change. It's an alcohol. It is not a part of that. C6, H14, OH, again, it's an alcohol. Do not consider it, okay? That's for organic bases. Organic acids, on the other hand, are just like any other acid in that they could start with an H, HC6, H13O6, something like that. You're like, oh, hey, yeah, that's an acid because there's an H up front. Or what they will do is they'll say c 6 h um, I'm doing this wrong, probably C, and then, uh, you know what? I'm just going to delete this first. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I'm going to delete this for a second. They'll do this instead. They'll say C5, H13, C, oh, no, there's O4, and then they'll do a C, O, O, H. And this right here is called a carboxylic acid. So I don't know how far AP has gone with some of this. And that you don't have to know the naming, but you have to know that what an acid will look like. So they, they might say to you, oh, this is an acid or this is a base, which they've done this question. They've said methylamine is a weak base. So I don't know, but there are a few free response or multiple choice questions they're going to ask you to compare some acids and bases, and one of them might might have this, um, might have something like this with an OH at the end, and you have to know that that is an alcohol and that's not a base. Okay, remember that the bases are, if it's not organic but it's a regular base, it's some other metal plus a hydroxide metals plus hydroxides. These are non-metals. Non-metals non and hydroxides don't give you, um, non-metals and hydroxides do not give you bases, right? Only metals and hydroxides give you bases. So, and, our, so, and, and acids are usually, um, uh, acids are H's plus non-metals. Should I write this down? I should write this down too. So, acids, they're usually, um, 
H's plus nonmetals. Bases are usually uh, metals plus OH's. And so hopefully that helps you that. Okay, so I wanted to get that out of the way before we jumped into Fourier response number one. So let's go back to Fourier response number one. And let me. Uh, okay. All right. So Fourier response number one, we have this methylamine and weak base and this reaction with water. It gains an H and you get OH minus. So the KB is 5.25 times 10 to the negative fourth. Methylamine forms such as methyl ammonium nitrate. Okay. So here we're going to have a problem right away. Um, that, you know what? Let's skip over for a second. We'll talk about it. So calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. Um, calculate the hydroxide ion concentration OH minus of a 0.225 molar aqueous solution of methylamine. So you would. KB, um, you did the KB and you did the ice table and you would see that X, the, it's X squared over 0.225 minus X. So here's the problem. You're gonna look at the KB and you're gonna say that is not less than one times 10 to the negative fourth. Therefore, I can't use that 5% rule or that approximation rule. Um, and this is what I would tell you. Uh, I'm pretty sure I heard this, but I, I have never seen it where you had to use the quadratic on an AP exam. So you might have said, okay, but that it doesn't fit the rule. So what I would tell you is that they would accept it if you said it was, if you said the 5% rule or you said the approximation rule or whichever rule you want to quote and you did it and you got this and you can see that it gives you two, di two different answers here. But I would honestly say that you would be fine giving, using the 5% rule and saying, you know, X squared over 0.225. Now I'm going to try very hard for the most part that you don't have to worry about using the quadratic. If it looks like you have to use the quadratic on one of my tests, you don't. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, as far as A goes, it's very straightforward. Hey, just calculate the concentration of OH minus. You're just looking for X and you get your, you know, whatever. Let's say it's the 1.09 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity. Okay. So now you have the OH minus. Now it says calculate the pH of a solution by adding. So you're adding solid methyl ammonium nitrate, which is the, um, that's the conjugate. Well, yeah, it's the conjugate salt. Okay, so if you had a weak base, that's the conjugate acid. So you can, you can tell right now that you're probably going to get a buffer. Okay, because if you're adding a salt, if you're adding the, the conjugate to the weak, whatever it is. So you're getting a conjugate acid to a weak base. And if they're doing that, then you know right away that you should be able to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And that's the one that I prefer to use, um, which is just me. Now, there's three ways to do this. And there's probably more than that. So one way you could do it is calculate the amount of ammonium, the methyl ammonium that you have. If you had 0 0.01 moles and there was no volume change, so there was just um, the 120 milliliters divided, you end up getting that molarity, okay? Then you have to do the methyl ammonia and you get the same thing. You're getting the number of moles. Um, so that so that when you uh, when you're figuring this out, you know how much you are um, when you're doing the KB. You're figuring out how much you're going to have. It's it's a little bit more complex, but you're trying to figure out what that X is going to be worth again, because then once you find the X for the OH minus, then you can find the POH and then you can find the pH. I think this is long and tedious. This is the reason I believe that we use the the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, which is B. Now in B, they did the KA. So you only have the KB. So you notice that, you know, remember that KW, which is, anyways, this is, I did some, okay. 
Can you? Oh, you guys can't see that. Never mind. Um, I, I pulled up an equation editor thing, and it wasn't. I'm just going to leave it alone. The one times ten to the negative fourteen. That's kW. So if kW is equal to ka times kB, kW divided by kB is equal to ka. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4th, which if you remember that was the kb up here, is equal to 1.91 times 10 to the negative 11th. Fantastic. The pKa of that is 10.72. So now you just have pH is equal to 10.72 plus log of, and you plug in the values for the molarity. Remember that it's the concentration of the conjugate. So this is the conjugate acid over the, or I'm sorry, because you're doing pH, it's the base over the acid. And we said that the molarity of the conjugate, or of the, the, the molarity of the acid was 0 0.0833 molarity, and that was on bottom. And the molarity of the methylamine, which is the weak base, was 0.225. So pH equals 10.72 plus log of that ratio equals 11.15. And then the final option is to do it using the POH equals PKB. You could have done it that way. Once you get that POH, then you just subtract from 14 to get the 11.15. Just any one of those methods would be fine. All right. Then the next step, this is, again, why this next step is why I think that it's so great to have the henderson hasselbalch equation. How many moles of either NaOH or HCl, so whichever one you choose, should be added to the solution in uh, in B to produce a solution that has a pH of 11. Assume that no volume change occurs, which is very nice of them to say no volume change. Um, so to get the 11, you of course had to know that the pH from B, from part B was 11.15. So if there was a drop in pH, you must have added an acid. So if we want there to be a pH of 11, okay, um, you could do it, again, there's two ways, there's probably more than two ways, but these are the two ways that are listed. You have a, a KB, and you have to have a change in the molarity. So if you use the, K, if you use the equilibrium equation, KB is equal to 5.25 times 10 to the negative fourth, great, is equal to, and then you have the concentration of the OH minus, uh, wait, wait a second. Oh, I'm sorry. The conjugate, okay, no, no, this is right. The KB is equal to this. So you have the you have, you have the base, the concentration of the base on bottom, and you have the acid on top. So if you're adding acid, it's adding it to the methyl ammonium, which is that CH3, NH3+. Plus, right? If you look up here at the very top in A, you can see it in that equation, CH3, NH3+. Plus. So you're adding acid to an acid. So if you add the acids, right, there's some change. And you have to, whatever you add to the acid, you subtract from the base. So that's why on the bottom, the methyl ammonia, which is the CH3NH2, it lost some amount because that strong acid, in this case, it didn't strip off H's, but it added the H's because it was a strong one. So it made more of the CH3NH3+. So you, you calculate using this, you're probably going to, it doesn't matter, you're going to have a longer equation, but you're going to end up solving for X from this equation. And that's the, the molarity change and it's asking you, not the molarity, it's asking you for the actual number of moles of HCl, right? Because there's no, right here it is, how many moles, there's no volume change, it just wants how many moles. So if you have, once you have the molarity, you just multiply it times the number of liters are, and that gives the number of moles. Um, if you do it in the Henderson-Hasselbach method, the pH equals, or in this case, yeah, the pH equals the pKa plus the log of that ratio of base over acid. So you subtract them out and you get the log of the base of the acid equals 0.28. And once you get that number, uh, that's that you end up getting the ratio of base to acid. Um, you can then uh, use that, multiply it times the, the volume to get the number of moles. Um, 
So I, I think of it as a, as a little bit easier way to do it, but that's, I don't know. Okay. So the last piece of this is D, a volume of 100 milliliters of distilled water is added to the solution. C, how is the pH of the solution affected? So if you guys remember, if you add some water to, um, if you add some water, does that change? Uh, well, that's probably not going to help you out because that's a titration. Okay, let me back up for a second. The, if you add some water to a buffer, okay, if you add it to this ratio, um, it's going to reestablish equilibrium, right? And so the ratio is going to be the same. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter, like you can add more water, but it's not going to actually change the pH because the ratio is going to stay the same. Um, the, even if you add more water and, you know, it, you get more of the, um, it's not going to, the water's not going to necessarily react with the, the OH minus in there. And it's not exactly going to, um, it's not going to make more of one thing or the other. And even if you wanted to say you diluted it, so the concentration was lower, so the pH must have been different. Remember that you have a ratio. You're adding your you're adding the water to both both pieces. So there, you're diluting each one, and so it, since you're diluting each one, um, and you have a lot of both, then that the ratio of the amount is is does not make any changes. Did so, of course, this is my question. Did, did all of that make sense to you all? And Caitlin, since you're the one that asked that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Those are big free responses. Okay, so if I go back in my list, I think we were at Lloyd. We wanted to get Lloyd. We wanted to get you to multiple choice 13. And um, let me just make sure you guys can all still see the practice test, right? All right. So... Number 13, when a sample of 0 0.004 molar HBr is diluted with an equal amount of water, the pH of the resulting mixture is closest to B. Okay, this is a, a harder one to do without a calculator. So I'm going to go to my bamboo paper. All right. Thirteen. All right. So, what we have is zero point zero zero four zero molar H Br. Okay. And diluted with an equal amount of water. So basically, we've taken the the concentration and we've divided it by two, right? Because we we've, mm -hmm. we've doubled the amount of water. So now we have 0 0.0020 molar HBr. That's 2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, to the negative 3. And so um, what we have here is we have a... Remember that 1 times 10 to the negative 3, the pH is equal to um, 3. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have three. We have something that's just short of that. Remember, if we kept increasing this, if we went up to, um, if we went up to, well, if we went up to 10 times 10 to the negative three, really, that's 10 times, or I'm sorry, that's equal to one times 10 to the negative two, and the pH of that would be equal to two. So we are much closer, this is much closer to this, it's much closer to three than it is to this. So if we look at our choices, let me go back to the choices again real quick. Wait, Mr. Warner? Yes. Why, why do you divide by two again? Because you don't, because you added enough water that you so now there is twice as much volume with the same moles of your acid. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. 
So um, we go back and our choices are 2.3, 2.7, 3, 3.3, 3 and 3.7. And so we knew that we were between, we were between um, 2 and 3. So that means that D and E are out. And um, we said that we were closer to 3 than we were to 2 because being that close, so that means that our only choice was B. Does that make sense, Caitlin? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. CJ wants to do the Oscars. That's good. Katie, Caitlin, you can you see, you can see the computer. A number is this. Chloe, yeah. did you finally figure out where we were, Chloe? Okay, good. Uh, Sneha, multiple choice number seven. I feel like we did this one. Did we? Yeah. We did. So. Sneha, did you did you get your answer to number seven? Then did you see that, or do I need to go back to number seven? I'll be happy to. Oh, you're just answering Chloe. Oh, gotcha. Okay, sorry. All right. So thanks. Seven on. Oh, so Caitlin Clark, we got seven on multiple choice. Yes. Okay, six from multiple choice on the practice packet. So Lexi, we're going to the practice packet now. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Okay, practice packet, and we're doing number six. All right, can you guys see this? It probably needs to be bigger, huh? Yeah, bigger is good. Oh, we can really see it very well. How about now? You guys okay now? It's great. Oh, oh that's better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's better. All right, and we're looking at number six. Oh, it's a Lewis, Lewis base. Lewis acids, Lewis base. You guys don't have to know that. No, no, it's like a different number six. It's oh. on page two. Page two. What, what? Number six, calcium sulfate is the least soluble? Oh. Is yeah. That, oh. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is the one where um, it's kind of a combination of the things that you, the solubility rules that I did, I said that you do, that you do have to know. And you have to know that nitrates are always soluble. Right, so that means that NO3 is, is, is gonna be really soluble, so that means that E is gonna be really soluble, and that means that B is gonna be really soluble. Yeah. Okay, you have to know that alkaline metals are always soluble, so that means D is really soluble. And that leaves you with A and C. And so this piece um, is gonna be not on the test, but the, the halides, the CLs, like sodium chloride, right, that's pretty soluble. The halides are pretty soluble. Um, and it's with the calcium, which, you know, eh, it's okay, soluble, compared to aluminum sulfate. Aluminum is, is not very soluble, and sulfates, even though calcium sulfate's in there, but the whole point is that sulfates are sometimes soluble. So you, basically, you're picking the one that is the least soluble of all of these. So, and you know that E, um, D, and B are very soluble. That leaves you with A and C as your only choices, and because of the halides, you're going to end up picking C as being probably the least soluble. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then we're looking for 13 on the multiple choice. Lexi, is that 13 on the packet or 13 on the practice test? We're good. We're good. Oh. Oh, we did that one. Or I did it. Okay, good. Uh, Katie Lloyd, are the labs due Wednesday or tomorrow? I, I'd hope that you guys would be able to do it tomorrow. Um, is that possible that you guys can turn those in tomorrow? Or are you guys, what's going on with that? I'm, like, what I like, I'm almost done with titration, but I've just been focusing really hard. Like me and Katie have been working at Origins for a really long time, working on the worksheets and the tests. So we okay. were just, we thought they were usually due the day after the test, so we were just clarifying. Yeah, usually, yes. 
And so the, the only thing was that because I postponed the test today, I thought that it, you guys would be all right. But, um, okay. but no, we'll go ahead and make it Wednesday. So go ahead and turn the labs in Wednesday. Are you sure? Okay. Sure. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay. Thanks. Chloe thinks we should push the test back for Wednesday. No, we're not pushing the test back anymore. Sneha, no, it cannot be Wednesday. If you guys need to do the retake, you need to do the retake. They meant the lab. Oh, the lab. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, yes. They saying the lab should be on Wednesday. Okay, got it. All right, got it. Okay, so we have gone through all the questions and we have had lots of fun conversations. And we're pushing the lab back. All right. So at this point, are there more questions? I need a text for Oh my gosh. Hey, let me, um, while you guys are thinking of a question, let me um, you call her. give you a couple of suggestions on where um, to go for review. So I'm going to pull up a couple of links real quick. Uh, oh, come on. What did I have it here? I'm going to screen share a couple links with you real fast. Okay, can you guys see my um, web browser? Yes, it's just really zoomed out. It's really zoomed out. All right. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So... This is the sciencegeek.net website. So if you were going to go, let's say you go back here. If you type in sciencegeek.net up here in the left-hand corner, just sciencegeek.net, it takes you to the homepage. You click on AP Chemistry, and then you pick, it says select your de destination, and you can select on Interactive Practice and click on Go. And um, he has a lot of practice quizzes. And so um, I'd say we follow along a lot of stuff. He, he breaks up his a little bit differently than we do. Um, but it's kind of cool. If you, this unit five review, unit five review questions, each time this review activity loads, it will randomly select 20 review questions for a set of about 60 questions. So you can click on that and it'll open up another page and um, you can show all the questions. But you can see here that, uh, like, here's a buffer question. And he tells you, I mean, this is probably how AP is going to do it. There's a buffer solution. You've got acetic acid, and you have the sodium acetate. And, kind of cool, there's the same molarity of both in the volume. So, basically, for this buffer, the pH equals the pKa. And now you're going to add some moles of HCl. And how will that change it? So, if you're going to add an acid you know that you're going to subtract it from the sodium acetate concentration. You're going to add it to the sodium or to the acetic acid solution and you're going to solve it again and you're going to end up getting, you're going to end up getting thing. And he gives a, he gives a range, which is kind of nice. So these are not necessarily, even though these are multiple choice, these are multiple choice with a calculator. So you can, you can do that. Um, so anyways, he's got lots of good questions in here. Some stuff just on equilibrium, some solubility. If, if it doesn't look like it applies to acid base, like this one right here doing KSP, you can skip it, you know, and you can always come back to this, this site and, and use this to study for the final exam. Um, but you can see right here, there's some great questions on it. All right. So that's one thing I want to suggest. The other thing I want to suggest was Adrian Dingle's website. And he, if you go back to a second, if you just type in Adrian Dingle's chemistry pages and into Google and it comes up and you've got AP quiz page, click on AP quiz page and up will pop, hopefully more quickly than mine is doing right now. Why is mine not moving very fast? There we go. Um, and then you just go and you find acid bases. And so, um, where are acid bases? I just had it. There it is, topic 14. Um, let me zoom in more because his is extra small. So, uh, so topic 14, acids and bases. He's got a lot of little quizzes. So you just set A and it, um, oh, what is going on? 
There we go. Uh, so you can see that um, he's got questions. So what is the pH of a solution with a pOH of 12 when Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the 14th, which it always is? And the, what do you guys think it is? You can do this pretty quick. Two. Two. And then you, you would need to answer them all, but I think you can check your answers. And... For A, I mean, it gives it, it's not very big. You guys probably can't see this, but answer question one. You chose the correct answer. Yay! And anyways, it does it for all of them. So you kind of need to answer them all at one time so that you're not, because um, it'll give you the answers to all the questions at once. But anyways, so there's some practice for that. Um, so I want to recommend those two sites. I'm not, I'm not necessarily suggesting you go do them tonight, but if you've done everything else and you're just wondering how you can test yourself, those are two sources that I think would be good to use. All right. So now, since I've been talking, let's see, we've got two, a multiple choice seven on that paper. Amanda McLean, is that the paper you're talking about? Is that the, um, is that the, uh, the practice packet. oh, the practice packet? Yeah, because you had it up on the screen when she posted. Got it. And then multiple, okay. All right, and then multiple choice 14. Uh, Marina, was that one for the, the, the practice test or the practice packet? Practice test, okay. So let's go to the packet first, um, and then we'll go to the test. So practice packet number seven. Okay, what is the pH of a 1 times 10 to the negative third molar solution of boric acid? The Ka value for boric acid is 6 times 10 to the negative tenth. Okay, so they give you some ranges here, um, and which is kind of interesting. Um, and the answer is D, but, but more importantly, how would you figure this out? Now, you could do this without a calculator, or you could do it with a calculator. Let me see if I can do it without a calculator real quick. Because since they give you ranges, it, they, that might exactly be what they're expecting. So screen share, bamboo paper. All right. So we have pH, we want to know, or no, I'm sorry, of a solution that, so the, the H3, B O three concentration is equal to one times ten to the negative third. Okay. K A is equal to H plus times H two B O three minus all over H three B O three. And the K A was equal to 6 times 10 to the negative 6. So we know that the minus x of the ice table is going to be negligible. So we've got 6 times 10 to the negative 6th. 10th, 10th. Man, so sorry. Tenth is equal to x squared over 1 1 times 10 to the negative third. So if we multiply 1 times 10 to the negative third uh, times 6 times 10 to the negative tenth, we end up with a 6 times 10 to the negative seventh, right, is equal to x squared. And we have to do a square root of both sides. So then x is equal to the square root of 6 times 10 to the negative, how lame is this, 3.5. Um, basically, it's between 3 and 4. So that means that, that this number, since it's between 3 and 4, that means that the pH is definitely, like let's say it's between 3 and 4, that means it, your choice has to be D, right? Between, so pH is greater than three, but less than seven, 
We know it's not equal exactly to 3 because we have er, exactly equal to 3 because it's that. So that's how you could do that problem without uh, a calculator. Does that make sense to you, uh, Amanda? Oh, okay, thanks. All right, um, let's go to the practice test now. Um, practice test, practice test, practice test. There we go. All right, number, uh, you said 13, right? No. Number 14, 14. got it, 14, sorry, thanks. Okay, we have oxalic acid plus water gives us water acidified, H3, the hydronium ion plus the oxalate ion. So it's diprotic with K1 being equal to 5 times 10 to the negative 2 and K2 equals 5 times 10 to the negative 5th. Which of the following is equal to the equilibrium constant for the reaction represented above? Okay, so this one right here, what they did, because this is so much fun. Let me show it you on the bamboo paper. All right. Okay. So the K, the K total, we'll say the KA is equal to the KA1, KA total is equal to total, KA1 times KA2 times KA3 etc, etc, etc. So they want to know what the Ka total is going to be if your Ka1, 5 times 10 to the negative 2, times 5 times 10 to the negative 5. So you've got 5 times 5, which is 25. And whenever you multiply exponents, you of course add them. 25 times 10 to the negative seventh. And when we're doing um, scientific notation, you have to have, you can't have a, um, two, you can't have two numbers. You can only have it be in the ones place. So that's basically 2.5 times 10 times 10 to the negative seventh. And we multiply 10 times that, we get 2.5 times 10 to the negative sixth, which is our answer in this case, which was C. Um, so, but I imagine this is what kind of had you faked out because you didn't know or didn't remember that this is the equation to find the K total for a problem that has multiple KAs. It's also the same way if you did a, um, a KA times a KB equals the KW, you kind of, kind of get where you're going. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. And Clark said, thank you. Good. All right, um, so we've been on here for over an hour. I'm willing to go to do more if you guys have more questions. Does anyone have more questions? You're good, Marina, okay. You're good, Amanda, okay. Um, I'm gonna try, by the way, as I'm thinking about it, I'll try to get an email out I don't know if, if the rest of the class is going to be paying attention to their emails because a lot of them are probably going to want to turn in there or, or try to study and get the lab notebook done tonight. So if you guys can spread the word, but I will send out an email and I'll post something on Schoology as well. Um, anything else you guys can think of? No? All right. Well, you're welcome. I'm happy to do this um, as long as you guys are getting something out of it. So um, I will, I probably won't be back on, after I send out the email in Schoology, I probably won't be back on until tomorrow morning. Um, I should be at school by 6.30. Um, so thank you guys. And uh, thank you, Chloe. Good night to you too. <laughs> You're welcome, Katie Lloyd. Thank you too. So, all right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Get some good sleep too. Are you guys leaving or are you guys waiting? Oh, okay, bye.